Uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming. I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. All right, welcome back to On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. Um, mm-hmm. We have a special part two of a New Zealand trip that Adam Weatherby, Brenda Weatherby, and Kobe Owens all went on. Oh, man, it's been over a month now, huh? It has. Mm-hmm. Time has time has been flying. So, if you are not watching, Kobe's here, Brenda and Adam all here. So, I think if you haven't listened to part one, go back listen to part one. Okay, I'm assuming that you now just listened to part one, so now you're back here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I think where we left off, you guys had just finished up an incredible fallow hunt, a great double double with yeah. <laughs> Joseph von Benedict, and now you guys are kind of. Oh, and then you shot your tar. Mm -hmm. Your tar was kind of the cap to it. Mm -hmm. And then there was the hike out. And then now just maybe start start us off kind of where the chamois hunt, which feels like, you know, the last podcast was over an hour. But this is kind of where the the adventure starts again, right? So Yeah. Yeah, we were going to head over to the whole other part of the island. So we went to rent a car. So we rented a Land Cruiser and drove – six, seven hours to the southwest part of the southern island, um, they call the Southern Alps, and um, and we had a helicopter arranged that Sam had helped arrange for us down there, so we are going to show up and meet a helicopter pilot and, uh, and get on in, and so, yeah, it was a long drive, it was beautiful, Kobe had the camera hanging out the window quite a bit, getting some cool footage of the island, right? Yeah, trying to when you could actually see, it was pretty foggy a lot of time, or not foggy, but just low clouds, you couldn't see the peaks. You could just see kind of what the terrain was, and then that terrain was ever changing on the drive over. So, did it start with like rolling, or how did the cha- like terrain yeah. actually switch? Yeah, so, rolling, and then straight up, straight down. Yeah, and then up over a pass, steep, windy bridges. There was a waterfall that went over a bridge. Yeah, oh, wow. that was pouring it, out like halfway through. <laughs> yeah, but this bridge is like That's cool. A mile or two of like a bridge down this like canyon going down this path so it's like you're on a bridge but it's like not just spanning this it's like weaving down the canyon it was like whoa we're up here <laughs> yeah that sounds wicked so also for people who might want to do this trip one day was running a car hard are you driving on the opposite side of the road or you are it- driving on the opposite of the road the, the biggest bummer is every time I went to change lanes, I put on the windshield wipers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest bummer. Um, outside of that, I, I did all right. Right, guys? Yeah. I drove the whole time, all the way there and back. Yeah. Mm. I've actually done that before. My truck is like a the old school shifter. Yes, yes. And then when I get into my girlfriend's car, it's the, the center shift. <laughs> so every time I, I do the same thing, I turn on the windshield wipers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it's doable. It's doable. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. you guys are going... You guys rented this helicopter. Are you like showing up to like a hangar or did you guys have a night in between? Or? We did. We got there and had a really good dinner um, the night before. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, because we got there. The last part of our drive was at night. And then it was like, you know, 730 helicopter thing in the morning or something like that. So we went and stayed at a hotel over there and had a really good meal. So kind of stocked up on on that before we went in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bought some last minute tarps because it was just raining and thought we might need some more cover, like little last minute supplies and all that kind of stuff. Because yeah. this is where you guys had gotten your backpacking meals taken. So you guys restocked on those. And this yeah. was, mm-hmm. was going to be kind of a backpack helicopter in kind of deal, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. And just the four of us. So no Kiwis along for the yeah. ride. So yeah. we were on our own. Just <laughs> us, us three and, and Joseph that yeah. we previously talked about on the other podcast. So yeah. So it was just... Literally, we were going to get dropped off in an area with Shammy, and we'd be the only ones there. And that's pretty much all we knew. And so that that's sounds... pretty much what happened. We <laughs> showed up, and the, um, the owner of the helicopter place had been flying for over 30 years down there, flew us in. And it was like the highlight of my life. <laughs> it, it was, was amazing going up over the 
New Zealand Alps in a helicopter. He with was this showing guy. off, I think, because I it? lost my stomach like four times. I was like, Brenda I kept, probably was I like reaching for things. Brenda was like, I hope it lands soon. And me and Kobe are like, I hope it never lands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in the back seat, and uh, my like mic wasn't on or anything. But if it was, they'd just been hearing hooting and hollering the whole time. I was like, this is awesome. I was just trying to record out the little side window. I got some some okay stuff for you know recording out a window. And where I could hardly move my arms around, but uh, was this helicopter big, or was it essentially like fit you guys and the pilot? No, it was like half the size of this. It was like the size of a table. Yeah, no, oh, wow. a small helicopter, and somehow he, there's a little belly pod on the underneath side, and we just kept shoving stuff, and we thought for sure we we're gonna have to take two loads. But in the back seat, I was in the front with the pilot, um, and you were in the front seat with me, yeah. and then um, Kobe, Joseph, and a lot of gear were in the back seat, and then just a little belly pod with the rest of it. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, we jammed in there pretty hard. So for someone, again, kind of thinking of that DIY guy, Sam kind of yeah. hooked you guys up, but this would be something that you could easily book a helicopter Correct. yourself. Yeah, people do it. Between Absolutely. four people wouldn't mm-hmm. be crazy expensive or anything. No, no, no. it's not. It's not bad. Yeah. How, how was the departure? Did he land this thing, like, on a mountain? Or how it's like you guys are flying You mean through? arrival? Yeah, arrival. On the, yes. Let's maybe talk about that. I've yeah. heard some fun things on helicopter arrivals in New Zealand. So No, this was kind of, uh, you know, because there's a flat spot by a river at the bottom. So that's where we were going to camp. So we kind of just flew up and over a mountain at the very end and then kind of came up this river. And we have some cool footage of it. I got some footage just out the front window and then just landed like right next to the river, which is where we later put our tent. Mm-hmm. Our tents. That's awesome. Our, yeah. our good friend Joe Farinato was telling mm-hmm. me about his New Zealand trip, and he's like, yeah, this helicopter was hovering like five feet off the yeah. ground, and the Kiwi looks at him and goes, jump, mate. And he's like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, jump. And he goes, no. He's like, well, you're going to jump. And then he jumped. But it was like, <laughs> felt like he was in an action movie jumping yeah. out of the helicopter. <laughs> Get down. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, cool. So you guys got a little ba- base camp. You guys are using um, – what kind of tents are you guys using? You guys like a TP tent style? Mm-hmm. Brenda and I were in a Seek Outside Cimarron four man TP tent, floorless. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I had the Seek Outside Sunlight. Um, it has a built in floor netting, uh, two person vestibule on each side. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it worked great. And I was happy to have the floor and have at least a two man tent. But I think I would have gone the Cimarron, Cimarron route next time just for. Being able to Wet maneuver gear. a little bit better within it, because like, yeah, it, yeah, the sunlight you can't stand up or do no. anything like that. Mm-hmm. That's truly like a, it's a spacious two man tent. It's a tr- true like you and yeah, you your, and me. We've shared that tent. We before. shared it, and our gear was able to fit under the yeah. vestibule if you have a backpack. Yeah. In this case, we were fortunate though to be able to also like, I brought a dry bag in. You know, you're truly like base camping. So I had my my stone glacier backpack and then i had a dry bag with a bunch of other gear in it mm-hmm. so i had like a another bag that i could bring a little bit extra amenities and keep the camera gear dry when it was raining and i wasn't using it type of deal did you guys like the floorless shelter in that environment it was we, awesome you would yeah, recommend we, okay. we loved it was that. perfect we've hunted with that particular tent a lot and just having that four man for two people and all your stuff and laying out all your gear cooking in there because it's just raining so you know, to be able to fire up your jet boil with the floorless is good. Brenda likes it. She can keep her side organized and let me have mine be messy. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this for like 30 years or something. So, if you, guys, yeah. you guys have a system. We so. do. Mm-hmm. I have a system, and he tries to follow it. <laughs> well, if you take a girl into the backcountry, like you have to have some rules, you know? So um, we have our rules. I feel like that could be a whole podcast in itself. It, Rules for taking your significant other on a backpack trip. And we, still liking each other by the end. <laughs> yeah, we need to write. That would be a fun one. We'll have to write that one down. So, mm-hmm. so time of day, you guys get camp all set up. Is it middle day? Or are you no, guys ready like, to hunt kind of thing? Like 9 o'clock maybe? Oh, if. wow. Yeah. yeah. And so actually we spotted before we set up camp. Like we just landed, the helicopter left, and we said, well, let's just make sure there's not a bunch of chamois around. There mm. was. <laughs> But this is funny because Joseph and maybe Kobe, I'm not sure, it, it seemed like they were wanting to go hunt and just leave the bags there. And I have a rule. You set up base camp because you don't know what's going to happen a few mm. hours afterwards. 
Um, so I'm like, well, you guys can go, but I'm setting up my tent. So we all set up tents, and we were all very grateful. Actually, Joseph, Joseph did didn't. not. And his was all wet. <laughs> all his stuff Continual was Continual theme. When he did set up, it was a 1.1 man. Yeah. 10-year-old Cabela's tent. 1.1. Isn't he like a gear guy? Too? He is. He is. <laughs> but I'm telling you he what. He was going light. Shout out to Backcountry Hunting Podcast, Joseph on Benedict with the, the small tent. And he, did, he didn't set it up that first day, right? Uh-huh. Or when we went up there? He no. didn't set it up yet. Yeah. yeah. So was it like a one-person, like, coffin style? No. Or did it have a dome? Had a dome? Oh, no. no if you in think between the two. <laughs> yeah. In between the if two. If you think of Stone Glacier's smallest one they make, oh, yeah, think yeah. of that, but peak. without, yeah. like, vestibules. Hmm. Like, it's just, like, a little... In yeah. this environment, oh, Joseph it regretted it. He yeah. regretted it. Highly regretted it. Because he yes. couldn't... He couldn't dry anything out everything unless was it was wet. on top of it. everything our raincoat soaked all the way through boots soaked all the way through so when you get back you had no place to put it because it's raining outside and then he would he'd try to hang it outside like we all did and then it, the rain would get on it so it was tough because yeah. of the and no firewood like yeah everything's everything just wet. wet so no fires to dry anything so out. it would have been pretty tough to run a stove like if you wanted to bring one of those little backcountry stoves you had to bring in firewood if you wanted like you'd yeah. uh, you'd have to put it on a helicopter and get a whole nother ride in gotcha for your huh. wood. Well, if you didn't have a camera guy, then you could have a whole <laughs> yeah, bunch of wood. Yeah, just cut the camera guy out. <laughs> <laughs> Lithium batteries just are so heavy. Or you only so had two people. If you had two or three people instead of four, you could. Yeah. But I don't know the there. rules about fires there, though, so I don't want to put anything out yeah. there because oh. we didn't light them, so I just I don't want yeah, to we don't anything. Know. We don't know. We, we, a fire would have been It was not an dandy. option, so we never researched it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Sweet. So tents are set up, minus Joseph. And then mm-hmm. you guys, he was just so locked into hunting, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We oh, were yeah. glassing him up. One skylined himself. And so in hindsight, later, we're like, that one that skylined him. So we could have probably, well, he popped off the backside. We could have never really shot him and made a good shot. But but he was only like 300 yards away, right? Yeah. He was mm-hmm. between far. three and four. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. right there. And then there were the three or two that turned into three on later. that face behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when you're saying skyline, what what are we well, talking about? Elevation. Well, gain there's and different. Loss? He was skyline on a a false peak, like a front little okay. false summit. Yeah. So um, we were basically in a giant valley that with the river in it, and then towering peaks above us, towering, and the river came down. But then there'd be all these other fingers with rivers that would come in to the main river, and then a lot of those were passable, and more than maybe not were not passable. Because they, you get so cliffed out oh, okay. um, for those. So there's all these fingers and areas you can glass. Some of it fairly open, some of it super rocky, and some of it uber thick vegetation. So you had just right from there. Basically, when we got there, I said you could hunt this place a week. And it's not like in Wyoming, if you'd have had that much land, you'd have been like, oh, a couple hours, we'll glass this thing up. Mm-hmm. You, you could have hunted there a week. Because of all the areas for them to hide and move, and it took you – we were about a mile an hour on average due to the if. terrain, the all the things, the environment, the wet, the tall grass, the steepness. So, like, something you'd look at and go, oh, we'll close in. That thing's a mile away. We'll just – we'll get a shot off in the next half hour. It's hours later till you get there. So it's kind of a unique environment where it's real fun. You get dropped off, and that's all you kind of have is this whole valley. I don't know. Yeah, so was the strategy then being in the valley and, like, walking, glassing, walking, glassing before you make a move on something? Or was yeah. it – Yeah, yeah. It's, we never – the longest we set up to glass was 20, 30 minutes. Like, it's the kind of like pick, pick this apart, and what you can see is what you can see. But if you move even 300 yards, you're going to get a different view of those finger ridges. You're going to expose more ground. So if we'd stop and glass there and – we saw something, I'd take some footage of it and video them doing their thing, and then we'd move to the next spot. And it didn't take us too long before we we spotted that group across the way, and then you spotted the one way back up there that we could just see, like, his head. Oh, he was so, bedded. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd seen him way, way up there, and that was not, at that point, it was not going to at all be gettable for that day. Yeah, so you're, like, glassing, you're like, okay, I can't go after this, but we know there's some right there. Yes. Here's another group. Maybe we can, yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's kind of like you're Options. almost taking taking inventory. Yeah. And then like two hours, it was actually like nice, partly crowd, cloudy, no rain that first like two hours. And then that was it. <laughs> yeah. And then it just turned on. And, and, and all the meanwhile too were like, 
we're not like professional chamois judges. Oh, like size. So, yeah. you know, they're small. And then the big ones are small, the little ones are small, the medium ones are small. And so you're sitting there. It's like, you know, the first time somebody comes to Wyoming to pronghorn hunt and they're looking at it and they can't tell the difference between a 70 and an 80 inch antelope or something. You know, like for us have been here, you know, kind of like the Kiwis would look at the chamois or something or those in Europe, you know, where they're at and the Pyrenees and stuff, they'd look at it and really know it. We're looking at it really far away and we're like, yep, they got them hooks up there. Like those little horns curl, you know. Yeah, then we're like, that's a monster. We didn't know. Yeah. We were trying our best. We just wanted to shoot mature males. We mm-hmm. could have shot either, but we wanted to shoot mature males. And that was kind of the goal. And I think the next day we'd finally seen a group of females and, and really kind of could tell the difference because they have horns too and, you know, just kind of figured that out. But we were also trying to, like, judge the booners from the non-booners, and that was Did, that proved did to be Sam difficult. give you any, any guys any yeah. tips where it's like, okay, it's got to be – twice as tall as the center of the yes. space or something mm-hmm. like that. And we actually went to his house and watched like a Kiwi DIY like video of guys just knocking over chamois and tar and so, so like, like kind of helped. Yeah, yeah it like was awesome. I don't know if it was VHS or was it DVD. I don't even know. Yeah. It was but old. We watched like an old video but it actually really helped us kind of prepare. He was kind of talking us through about him and stuff. So that was kind of fun. So it was yeah. essentially it was the tip though like how long it was and then looking for the tip back or Yeah was... and the hook because some of them hook all the way over and do 180 degrees okay. some of them don't and then you can't really tell the thickness of the bases no. through binos very far he so. was talking about like the ears like double the length mm-hmm. of the ear okay um it's and close to 10 inches or something like that uh, was, was there saying? any yeah. similarity to when you hunted mountain goat last year on like thinking or no not really no, mountain goat, you would have between the nannies and bills, you have those glands. Like, we asked him about that. Like, he's like, no, they don't have any, like, no secrets. Like, no gotcha. look for this and that. Although, once we got out there, you just, you could kind of figure it out. Yeah. So, But the first few, we definitely lifted a leg and were like, yes. It's, <laughs> Everyone, it's a male. You get up, yeah. <laughs> okay, you get up to it, it, and then you lift the leg. You're like, yeah, yeah it's okay. We got another <laughs> Very male. Very mature male. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So that first evening, find a few. It's starting to rain, and then no, lots of action on my, like the first day. Like no. you guys didn't go any stocks or anything. Right? That's not true at all. Yeah. Oh, well, do you want me? The re- yeah. I mean, I I could just let you tell the story. <laughs> we got lots of action, Tyler. Yeah, we had lots of action. Um, the the dilemma. <laughs> I didn't mean to shut you down. <laughs> no, I, the dilemma was funny. we saw this group and then we didn't know how to get up to him because it was really steep. So um, I picked the easy way and the other people picked the hard way. <laughs> Adam came with me. <laughs> we cro- um, crossed a river first. Yeah, crossed a river. And then we kind of took two directions because we didn't know what would, which way was going to be easier. Um, and so uh, it proved to be very steep. Um, but... We made our way up there, kind of came back together, and then separated again. Um, and at that moment, we saw some chamois, and we just got down. The ones that we the were ones. after. Yeah, we knew yep. if we get to this one place, we'll probably see up this finger. Yeah. And it, the, the plan worked. I mean, we were on going up that steep hill, though. Brenda just maybe undersold. It was it was pretty steep. I it mean, was, it, was, it was grab, you know, you're on all fours, you know. Like you, half half you hour? like two, half two hour? and a half feet, you'd fall. Your face would hit. Like you would, you didn't have to like <laughs> lean forward that far yeah, for your no. face to be touching the ground. No, like it a was foot, vertical. Yeah, no, it was vertical to get up this thing. So you're I like was just glad the grass, the grass was very strong. Yeah, the grass was strong, which was awesome because you know they always say, well, don't don't grab grass or grab a stick, and you're like, no, you do. Yeah. Like, and that helped helped quite a bit. Kobe, you being extra cautious on this hike or? No, we're sending it. <laughs> it was no, steeper no, than the other one, but w- a tons of, way steeper, yeah. but a lot, a lot of things to grab. I mean, it was literally just grabbing, uh-huh. you know, every hand kind of grabbing. I actually have yeah. Joseph on video, like, t- not falling, but, like, he slid, like, eight feet down and, and stuff. So he, he took a little slide. But I think we briefly touched on it last time where, with, like, Onyx didn't work. I use Onyx maps all the time for like terrains and like yeah. trying to find the way. Did yeah. you? Could you guys use that or no? Just no. by sight. No sight. We we downloaded it at the hotel the night before. Was we got to download, but there was no topo. That, that's what essentially I all. use my topo maps yeah. so much where it's like okay, like you're it. not 
Don't, didn't have it. Okay. It didn't matter if you could just look at the satellite version and be like, yep, that's that's a map. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. But it's interesting because over time, I think we got better at judging. Oh, no, no, we, we need did. to go this way. Yeah. Go this way. Yep. So by the end, I mean, that we'll get there, but we were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that worked. And that was, mm-hmm. that was actually really good, you know? So we got yeah. better as, as we took time in there. So, and it was raining the whole time in that whole stock. So, you know, we'd seen them across the whole entire river and way up in there, these three, the one I'd seen was way further up the river. And then we knew there was a, a, a seemingly a bigger one out of these three that we'd seen and made it up there. And so when we crested the top, Joseph and Kobe were over to the right, maybe 100 yards, and there was a whole finger in between us. And then they were over there. They couldn't, you guys couldn't see. No, the they chamois. couldn't see yeah. the chamois, but they could see us. So I was giving them hand signals, like, you know, pointing and that we have it. But at that point, the one bedded chamois was on us, mm-hmm. like less than 300 yards, just oh, locked wow. to it on us. So the, the time was ticking. And I knew we wanted to get on film. Kobe was over there, and I just pretty much waved you. I'm like, I'm recording you. Like, I can get your guys' interactions with right. each other. That'll be great. Don't don't blow the stock. We if Kobe would have came over to blown the stock, they'd already seen us. Mm-hmm. It was the time was ticking at that point, and so um, we said Brenda to kind of get up get up on it, you know, first. And this was a good opportunity. We'd kind of said, okay, if it's like this scenario, you can shoot, and if it's like this, whatever, and. Plus, after I, I joked, after she hiked up that hill, I'm like, she might just be mad and not hike up here anymore because, like, it was near-death experience, especially after Kobe. So I'm like, <laughs> let's have her shoot her shamey just in case she doesn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> the next day I didn't wear a backpack, actually. <laughs> but, but she went out every day. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we quickly, um, it, she got on, got on her prone and... Yeah, got on prone and... I don't know. I can't remember. I just shot it. She killed. She <laughs> killed the chamois. I say muscle memory just took I over. Know. I don't know. That, yeah, I made a good shot. Yeah, three hundred ish yards. No, it was closer yeah. to two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was close. Yeah, that's awesome. It was close. There's one seventy. 150, 170, I think. Mm, I don't remember. I remember we had a one fifteen, a one fifty five, yeah, and a which Kobe. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, <laughs> hashtag Spoiler spoilers. Alert. We can. <laughs> yeah. You're good. Don't worry. <laughs> He's just it. messing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, she rolled it down the hill. Mm-hmm. Basically, made a phenomenal shot. Rolled it down the hill. I had seen one other one standing at that point, and so oh, yeah. the one standing ran up and over. And Kobe and Joseph saw it and a third. So they didn't know. Joseph didn't know if he could shoot a double because he didn't know if one was one Brenda already shot. Well. I'd seen the one she already shot rolled down and die on our side. Mm-hmm. They took off on the other side of the finger, those other two. In hindsight, could he have even got a shot off maybe? Yes. One did stop on a rock for oh. about three, four, or five seconds and He's looked back at, at us. He's um, he pretty good at doubles. He pretty quick. Was, he pulled up, but it was one of those things where we're like, is one of those the one? Because we knew we got the two from yeah. you because you couldn't see the third. No. And two came over, and the one was just gone. And the second one was kind of going a little slower. I'm like, oh, like what what happened? I didn't get the it rolled signal. I don't know if you gave it or I, I was didn't giving see it, it, but you guys were watching those and I was yeah. like waving my hands trying to give you the signals. Yeah. But. So I'm trying to get on it and then he decides not to shoot and it, it took off. I mean, it was a split second. I think yeah. he could have got one off, but it was one of those things where like, uh, not really sure here. Let's just play it safe. Yeah. And how big is it? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, so we What uh what caliber were you shooting? Six five RPM, six five RPM. Mm-hmm. Did the job. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. One twenty four yeah. hammer. So rolled it down the hill, and then it was getting up to it, and we went up this pretty gnarly little, like, what would you even call that little gut? I don't yeah. know. You know, just kind of up these rocky things to get to them, and it was cool. You know, got a cool setup for for some trophy photos there on that rock, yeah. and. Uh, they're really cool animals. They just, yeah. they're really cool. I mean, I really love hunting antelope in Wyoming. Like there's something really unique mm-hmm. about them. And that's what it felt like, like just a really unique type of animal, mm-hmm. small, um, agile, just where they live. Um, they're mm-hmm. just cool. They, they would really like, fun to hunt. they would like hop too. Yeah. They had this like weird little like hop around if they, once they started running, it was like kind of like, kind of cool. Kind of like a bound almost or yeah. a little different than a bound. That's Maybe. Cool. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. But yeah, they're 
So what is super that? cool? And they're bigger. So Joseph had been on a hunt with a buddy of ours, Austin, over in the Pyrenees in Europe, in Spain, and had hunted them and said that, um, which is more where they're originally from, over in Europe. And they uh, these were a substantially larger bodied and horns. Now, to us who hunted them for the first time, I mean, when we were taking a picture, there was one point Kobe just reached down on the back, just grabbed the hide, and then moved the animal with one <laughs> like arm. completely picked yeah. it up. Just like, like a that. small dog. <laughs> Not a small dog. Well, a medium okay. dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, small animals, though. Yeah. So, and it was a, it was a mature male. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. What was the, the yeah. fur like? I'm always, like, interested. Beautiful. Because... I don't know if this is true, but you know, like the sham wow, like a little <laughs> chamois towel infomercial. <laughs> yes. Allegedly, that's the same, like material. I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounds like the a good coat story. was super cool, really yeah. beautiful, lots of different colors. Yeah, very very cool. Tans and blacks, and they weren't so quite in there. Like a sham, like a, sh- like a chamois well, towel. That's so essentially it should be from like farmed chamois. No. So that, that what guy I was full thought, of it. what <laughs> I thought is chamois was the color, that yellow color, because that's kind of on their chest. There's this yellowish color. So I thought it was color. Now you're thinking I'm, it was like, like the like, material, like yeah, the texture thinking, of the fur. Yeah, that's what I thought. That We're going to have the chamois. It's not a chamois. It's a, sh- it's a chamois. chamois. Yeah. yeah, which short chamois, chamois towel. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I think, I think you're I was, pulling that out of right field, but I have no idea. You can't really dry your car with them. Yeah. But if you brought, I don't know. Yeah. I think that was a bit of a stretch, but I thought I'd bring it up. Yeah. Uh, no, beautiful. We got some, Kobe got some awesome uh, photos and uh, then put the the chamois on our backs and um, decided to kind of hunt our way back to camp um, after that. And it was raining and we were just up on the side of a mountain. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what we had. So Brenda had already, probably at that point, you, you were just... I was like, <sighs> I'm done. No <laughs> so more pressure. It was just raining, boots were getting wet, everything was getting wet, and we had a chamois on our back it, mid-afternoon at that point. Yeah, you know? it wasn't yeah. late. So we probably ate, started hunting at nine, that was three, I don't know, maybe something. I ate a freeze-dry right before we went after it. But you eat a freeze-dry <laughs> every time was, before or after anything, so that say, doesn't when? help us. <laughs> Uh, I, one question I did you did want to ask with the terrain. Did you wear your normal type boots, or did you go with a full leather synthetic, or mm. just because it was so steep? You always think of like some people like to change it up and do a super stiff mountaineering boot, or did you just do normal boots on this one? We, I did my normal kind of track mountain extremes. So did Bren, but we did use micro spikes. Micro spikes, okay. To, I to went help his grip. Normal Crispy Nevadas. So cool. Yeah. No, no, no issues. I mean, they got wet, but everyone's got wet. Yeah. Me. But yeah, I would I would hunt in that boot again there. Wasn't it that Joseph yeah. said if he could do it again, he'd be in like, um, like full fishing full waders, fishing rubber waders. boots. Oh, you oh, did. Or the Alaska so, like rubber boots yeah. and stuff. No, I truly think you get a pair of like Sims, Patagonia, whatever brand, hip fishing waders, not the ones that come up and cover your core that hold in the core heat. Sure. And then some wading boots or oversized hunting boots. Uh, my wading boots have a high enough ankle that they would provide enough ankle stability for me because I need mm. that. And then I'd run micro spikes on them. I <laughs> honestly think I would run that. That's time. crazy. We all had we had three we different brands wet. of boots. We had Loa, Kenetrek, Crispy. And every one of them, you could dump water out of your boot when we got back to the tent at oh. night. Squeezing water out of your So it didn't and matter socks. if it was a full grain leather to keep it waterproof. I, no. <laughs> no. It could be made of ShamWow, and, <laughs> and it still would leak. Well, then we were crossing that river a couple times a day. and The we grass were, was the least... worst part. Just it held so much moisture that it yes. dumped all that moisture on you from the yes. hips down. Like nothing and stood We had chance. rain pants. We had gaiters. Yeah. We had our boots. You know, we had everybody had their gaiters but Kobe, actually. Yeah. Oops. Make sure to... Uh, he got a new pair and didn't try them on, and they were yeah, the wrong yeah, size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. They were yeah. way too big, so they wouldn't have like even uh, held the water out. <laughs> so It was just wet. You just were going to get wet, and in the morning, you just put on wet boots. It's just the wet way it was. Wet socks, wet yep. boots. Just yep. start hiking, make them, make them warm. Like if I, had a ge- a hot a, tub. if I had a generator and a boot dryer, it would have been amazing. <laughs> they yeah. still probably would have been wet. I don't think. <laughs> Kobe, did you try to bring those little electronic boot I dryers or not? I did not. I thought of the Graxaw boot dryers on our drive out, but they wouldn't have done anything because you wouldn't have had any heat. They, it would have just moved air around and the air was wet. They were that wet that they would have taken. They took, I put those Graxaw boot dryers in my boots when we got home 
and it took them i put them next to the heater it took them two and a half days to dry out my boots over two and a half days that's two yeah oh it was, it was huh. uh, it was three to four days later and it was a sunny day and a weekend after we got back and i go to brent oh, i'm gonna go in the garage see if our new zealand boots are dry three to four days later in a heated garage i picked them up and they were just so heavy still three to four days later yeah. after traveling back yeah yeah they're wet yeah. I think there's like Sounds. an element of just um, acceptance, right? <laughs> yeah. We've all been on those hunts where you're like, <laughs> I'm going to be wet. I'm not, I, I can't like preserve my dryness at any, you know, actually there was like varying degrees of preserving dryness. Like I don't think Joseph preserved any dryness. No. Some, I probably preserved the most dryness. Um, <laughs> but there is an Brenda acceptance. Brenda does that. Like every hour she just brings out dry socks. I'm like, where did those Like come she from? just has so many socks she <laughs> just keeps preserve. bringing out dry socks <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was funny so uh kobe walks off the mountain that day then the rest mm-hmm. kind of yeah, yeah, afternoon. Yeah. so yeah. we hiked out of that low ravine hiking down a different direction uh towards camp we kind of went up the basin that day and went up these finger ridges now we're circling back down on the opposite side of the river from camp and uh this is kind of below camp almost down at the edge before it like drops off into the big valley below us we spotted a a chamois down there uh at the end of the day and uh i'm getting some video footage of it and joseph and adam are going back and forth because it had one horn so they were calling him one horn long though long like one good long horn yeah and joseph's like someone needs to shoot that (laughs) <laughs> and Adam's like, well, why don't you shoot? He's well, I kind of want a proper one with, with two horns. And Adam's like, yeah, I kind of do too. Joseph's like, Kobe, you want to shoot it? You should shoot it. Or you asked me, right? Kobe, yeah. you want it? I'm like, heck yeah. I'll, I'll he dropped his camera and grabbed that rifle really quick. Because yeah. he, he, he was coming to do camera, and he's like, dude, I'll shoot an old oh, unicorn. Unicorn, yeah. Shammy. So I got camera was set up on it, and uh, it was at 420 yards. And, uh, yeah, I grabbed a 6.5 RPM and, and got steady, did a couple dry fire trigger pulls. I'd, I'd already shot the gun at the beginning of the trip and inch above center right where it needs to be. And uh, so pulled the trigger on it and uh, missed. It, it stood right up, and uh, I had my earplugs shoved into my brain. And uh, so I didn't hear Joseph call out, uh, hold six inches left for wind. Because it was perfect it was elevation. Perfect elevation, yeah. And they're not very they're big. Was, so. No, they're very small. It went right in front of them, and they're because of all the canyons and everything. We we didn't read that wind from where we were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, when you was when you there, play so. it back in the phone scope footage, you're like, "Yep, I see it there." But where we were, it wasn't windy, and there was like canyon in between us, and yeah. we just didn't judge mm-hmm. that. So, um, took like five ten seconds and, and squeezed another one off, and it was even closer it was like literally it grazed the fur on the front it was no hit and i know i actually (laughs) just washed it back and i actually scared the pee out of it it started are you serious (laughs) yeah i just watched it back the other day (laughs) it started peeing everywhere and and then and disappeared and so i was i was bummed but adam told me i made good shots and it was i got an opportunity and that's that's what i came there to i was like hey i got my opportunity and and uh if i don't get one at the end of the trip i'll I'll at least have say i had an opportunity so it was perfect elevation they're both in exactly the the same spot it's very clear it was just the wind because of his earplugs he didn't hear the call if he'd heard the call he'd have dropped it for sure so they were they were very good shots he just the wind got us on that one and he's the only one who had to shoot at distance and he's the least experienced (laughs) shooting at distance yeah Yeah. (laughs) i was i was very comfortable with it but uh yeah Mm -hmm. i'm definitely the least experienced shooting at distance and and uh Mm -hmm. but it's so probably yeah. probably a shout out to one of those little uh, electronic earbud infomercials <laughs> there that yeah. that could have right because yeah couldn't hear it. No, I think that that actually would be something that I'm I've already thought of investing in because of you know I didn't hear Joseph a couple days prior the first time he asked are you on it on the double for the fallow deer mm-hmm. I didn't hear the first time he asked so it's like. Being able to put those in when we're just getting close to not have to worry about putting them in, I can focus on videoing stuff, might be actually a good thing. Mm-hmm. And I was, I've actually been thinking about mm-hmm. getting some. So, yeah. So it was, it was yeah. still great. It was fun. We got to get on another one. And man, that day was so long and so wet. And we had a chamois on our back. When I say we, I mean Bren. And so, like, 
not going to lie, when we were getting back to our tent at dark, I'm like, I'm glad we're not just now getting up to a one horn chamois starting to take pictures. Yeah. It's a long day. <laughs> no, we were all, when we were back at camp, we're like, I'm pretty happy I'm eating right now. Even though, <laughs> yeah. uh, even though I missed it, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm like happy I'm eating a hot meal right now and, <laughs> and uh, have my wet boots off and just am in wet socks. <laughs> but that is like something, though, like a growth as a hunter and or shooter, especially I, I, I've learned a ton since I started at Weatherby, though, is like, marksmanship but then like that next like level of mm-hmm. like reading wind like going through your shot process of just like thinking you executed a perfect shot but then it's like okay it's a little bit more than that so that, it's like for for me it's i've i've gone through that it's like you're you get your wind you dial you breathe yeah you press that trigger so you'll definitely i'll get gro- there. growing <laughs> I was saying, growing pains but it's it'll be good in the long oh yeah no so. doubt no i'll never forget that and and that that just makes you better hunter like you're saying is like going through that experience even though it didn't end with the harvested animal i grew from it and and gonna learn from it in the future yeah mm-hmm. it's cool and you'll be back i'll be back i will go back for that <laughs> i'm going back for big old brown trout and chamois so that's what when you guys got back brad hunt from gritty like immediately texted me as like that looked like a pretty fun trip that they went on. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Well, well, we better get it. We better get on to more animals. Huh? Yeah, more yeah. animals. I always look down at the timer here, and man, oh. we uh, we're we're good at talking. So yeah, yeah. let's go t- to that <laughs> next one. <laughs> so that night, we kind of the typical plan out what's going to happen the next day, and really what we knew is we shot up on this end where both Kobe shot at, where Brenda shot hers, and then they had run away up and over the peak, and um. We had also then seen that day, um, the one that I had seen way up there, we, after Brenda shot hers, before Kobe shot at his, we had a better view because we were up higher on the other side, saw back up there and actually saw that the one that I'd seen was actually three and they looked to be monster, booner, (laughs) chamois, maybe the biggest ones we'd seen. They were just way up there and we knew if we had a full day, the big question is, can we get to them? Mm-hmm. which we were 90-something percent sure we'd be able to get to where we could shoot at them. I was less sure. <laughs> and maybe 50% <laughs> sure that we'd be able to recover them. Yeah. And so kind of the whole idea is there were three, and so, hey, Joseph, let's go see if we can get two and double was kind of the yeah. whole goal. And we had different routes that we would that we had planned in looking at the terrain and settled in on – Okay, we'll go up to the left and come back around over here. We'll probably see them here. And our hope was that as these ri- as the rivers and these fingers go up, they're too steep to cross. Mm-hmm. But as they get all the way up to this super big mountain at the back, there's that spot that you could maybe that just— That back hill base, yeah, the yep, basin. The yep. back of the basin mm-hmm. essentially has to come to a But head. we couldn't yep. see it from way down there, and it was going to be a s- hours of commitment to know if we could do that or not and and get to it. We were already like— Okay, is there a flat spot the helicopter could land on when they pick us up and go, hey, by the way, we have a chamois down. So yeah. we're, you know, uh, joking about different ways to, to get to the chamois, but that's kind of was our plan for that day. Yeah, to kind of like set that base in the picture is like they were almost on an island to the to the yeah. left of them. If you're looking up the basin, yeah. it was a sheer cliff with like a pla- plateau, was angle plateau is all textured that we planned on hiking up. And then the other side was multiple of those big finger ridges with canyons. So we'd have to go like through like three or four of those. And the last two looked really like, that's pretty iffy. Don't think we can get there from that. So yeah, the whole up and around and trying to access from the back. But they're almost on like an island with two a river on each side of yes. them. Yes. Well, that's pretty cool. That's like if I was a chamois, that's where I would be. It was <laughs> they a, were in the right spot. It yeah. was pretty cool. So we got up in the morning and said, we're committing. That's going to be our day going after these chamois and so we started hiking through the wet grass and the rocks and the rivers and just going up hills and spotted that bigger group that we determined was probably females because they were <sighs> yes uh smaller horns smaller mm-hmm. body like there's one bigger bodied one couple smaller bodied ones barely yes. bigger than their ears yeah saw them a ways away almost back on the other side where brenda's was but way up there further and they definitely we, it was the first time we went, okay, that, that's probably what the smaller ones look like or the females look like or younger males. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'd seen that. And then we were hiking Kept up, hiking. And, and I decided to stop for a minute. Kobe was going to go back and take care of business for a minute. <laughs> and mm-hmm. when he went back to take care of business. Jumped him. W- jumped to 
at like 40 yards. Oh, wow. Yep, there was Kobe, gone again. Yep. That's the second time, for, and, and that's not the last. <laughs> Joke, uh, later, uh, when you, you got there, but never mind. I don't want to spoil it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but the bottom line is I shrunk back, shrunk down, and I probably should have kept my eyes on him. You know, you know when you get down and then they yeah. see you move, then they take off. I went duck down real quick. Told Brenda and Joseph, got up, they were gone. And then we grouped back together, hiked up a ways, and then twenty thirty minutes later, one peaked over skyline, like on the like straight up from us. Gave us five second look, and then gone, gone. Yeah, so we blew those ones. The, the, but granted, those weren't the ones. No, no, that was just on the, the island, those were the ones that you. Yes, were, you were. It's kind of like that when you like when you're devising your plan to stock. It's like, okay, what am I going to run into on the way there? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what that was. So we kept going when we got up towards the top areas. It was just so beautiful, hiking through little waterfally things, and I mean, it was just absolutely gorgeous. Our whole plan was to get up there. I think by noon. Mm-hmm. To, Joseph said. What, I don't remember what time. He's like, I'm, I'm going to have my hands bloody by... I thought he said 11.30. Yeah. He did or, say 11.30. Yeah. Something like that. It was pretty doggone close that we got up to the top and looked basically over on this ridge. And we just... I went up and I was the first one to see at less than 200 yards, 150? 115 on 115 yours. yards. I see a chamois butt. And ducked back down. And we kind of just all grouped together. And I'd peek my head up beyond these rocks, and we kept looking for his buddies. And we at 115 yards, you just can't. The wind was howling right at us, so it was our wind was perfect. Mm-hmm. But there's granted between us and him, you're like, oh, it's only 115 yards. But again, we didn't know what the cliff was going to do really ahead of us yet between us and him. So we're looking at almost straight across. And if you do, wouldn't have known from where we came from. You wouldn't know there's a sheer cliff between us and him. He's on a whole other plateau, that island that Kobe was talking about. And so we ducked down. Kobe got up with the camera. Um, at this point, I was going to shoot. I think somehow, as I don't know, Joseph had shot two animals. I'd shot one, yeah. you know, because he'd shot the tar and the fallow. We, I think after Kodiak, what was our joke? You got to f- shoot fast with the Weatherby guys. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Went to Kodiak, kept getting back at night. I'm like, yeah. how come all the Weatherby employees keep shooting animals for all our guests? And then I did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shot one out under uh, Brian and Brad. But anyways, um, ended up setting up, got the camera on him. And uh, what we knew is once we shoot, if it's a guaranteed, like, good, clean shot, then it's kind of jump up and start to move around and look and see if his buddies were around. Mm -hmm. Because he was bedded almost at the same spot that we'd seen him that morning before, way, way, way up in there. But the train looked so different. So I shot, rolled it, one shot. He was bedded when you shot? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Slightly quartering two. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, quartering two, fairly decent. What's funny is Brenda's got up, rolled down the hill. Mine got up. Rolled down the hill. Ugh. Same gun? Same gun. Same gun. Yep. Same gun. So it rolled down the hill, you know, congratulated myself on a 115-yard shot. And um, no wind mattered at that distance, obviously. So I was just super stoked. But, but he stopped. He rolled and stopped in view where he was in a good spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's always like that second. Oh, time. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it was, it was a money shot. We were good. And so we get up, we start looking, and we like. Just waiting for someone to pop up out of the rocks. Yeah, we're his buddies. We look all around straight where he's at in the whole kind of field, and maybe 100 yards on each way that we could kind of see on this thing. He was grazing way up on the top of this mountain, and like nothing. And so we go. Ah. So we had, we'd kind of crept up to where I was, and so we had a couple packs back there, yours and Joseph's. Well, we, we'd moved up another oh. 20 yards after you shot. Oh, yeah, to, to look over and see. Yeah, over that cliff, mm-hmm. actually. So yes. we were looking, like, back towards the end of the basin and a little bit to our right, like 90 degrees to our right. Yes. And so I went, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go grab your, or this I'm gonna was go grab the third Joseph. Time. Yep, this is the one I was talking about. I'm gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. I know she talked about it. I'm gonna go grab Joseph's pack so he can stay here and watch, and I'm gonna grab my pack and another camera. 
Look look at you being just a helpful cameraman too. Look at that. Just part of the crew. And, uh, <laughs> Brenda, you were gonna go back and get and my she, pack. And she Maybe? was I don't know. She was gonna I was but, on the way. Yeah. I was on the way and then Joseph yelled. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> so I have a pack in each hand and a camera in each hand and I get yelled at. They're right below me. So I drop the packs and Take off running. But they'd seen Joseph went off. Maybe we were looking over the cliff straight ahead. Mm -hmm. And And then it was like to the right. He's like maybe back over here lower down. He went to look off this other cliff. And just as he did, they'd heard a gunshot and they saw him skyline. The camera guy's not there. I'm back over here. Joseph's there with his rifle and he's got two bucks about ready to go over and down where you wouldn't see him off a ledge. And so it was like, it all happened really quick. But again, we'd already doubled once with the fallow. Mm-hmm. So Joseph, the doubler, just go, and I'm like, go over here. You're like, you're like, I think the top left one is the better one. It's like, I'm sliding into home plate. I like slide it next to Adam. I'm like, I'm on him. And Joseph goes, are you sure? And I'm like, I acted super confident. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, they're shammy. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah. But no, I did. One looked bigger bodied, bigger base, just bigger horns. He, How far were those? I think that was the 170. Yeah. So crazy. Super close. They're going over. Kobe just slides in there with the shaky camera. No tripod. No tripod. No anything. And Joseph drops. Nice. Right. Like three, four more seconds. They would be gone. And no, that's the thing though, is he did roll out of sight. It did oh, roll yeah. out oh, of sight. That one it, did. it like was kicking yes. and it rolled out of sight and we're no like, oh no. we didn't know if it we didn't know if he was on a straight down ledge, a rolling hill. Mm. So we were at that point fifty fifty if he just ro- we didn't even know if we'd get over to the island they're both on. A. And then B, we knew where mine was at least. His even if we got there, did it then fall off the next one on the other side? And could we not get it? So. And Joseph was shooting seven PRC, mm-hmm. correct? Yep. 177 hammers. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, the Weatherby load. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, and they're small animals. So 177 grains That's at that distance bullet, yeah. it, it, with that cartridge. Pretty sure. We knew the animal died. We just <laughs> yeah, didn't just know where. exactly where. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. So then it was time. The sun was kind of starting to pee. It was still raining. But the sun was kind of peeking out, gave us some good lighting for your photos. Mm-hmm. But then it <laughs> then it came again after that. Oh, so yeah, so at that point, bad. it was great. We have two dead chamois. We're celebrating. Can we get them? Yeah. So we ventured over to the left where that whole finger, that river, was going to come out of the mountain. Yeah, the like, cliff above us met the bench we were on and the ravine below us. And I just found this little route I was able to just skirt along. I was like, yeah. yeah Kobe good. went ahead, and it was not the most sketchiest thing that we'd done no. the whole week by any means. Nice. It was pretty doable. But if that spot wasn't there, the whole rest of the thing was just sheer cliff all the way down for hundreds and hundreds of yards. So, like, yeah, we did it. We got up to mine, had some awesome pictures, lifted the leg, two for two. <laughs> yeah. So uh, mine was smaller than Brenda's. A little bit more mass. Oh, it yeah. had the most mass, but it didn't wasn't as tall yeah. as Brenda's um, was. He had a lot of heart, too, I bet. Just he did. Great personality. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, we took care of that animal and cut it up and then got the pictures, and then it was starting to rain pretty good. Yeah, it came started coming down real good when we... Worked then, up that hill to Joseph's because we had to go through a ravine. We had another area. Joseph began thought it was a little sketchy. I thought it. I thought it was. Fun. He he, he looked at it and yeah. he was like, I don't know. And I yeah. just crawled. We right made up it, it. We made it up to that area fine, and got up to his, and his pictures are maybe I don't know maybe the most it just the way the clouds for yeah. all of ours they're uniquely different with sheer cliffs behind you and these clouds rolling in, and um, Joseph his last name is von Benedict. And so uh, Austrian, yeah. and so um, you know, Shami are native over there in that area. And so for him, this had been a bucket list animal for him more than it was any of us. So he had some. It was very special. Some for heart, him. yeah, some heartfelt kind of moments up there taking those pictures. That was definitely the pinnacle for Joseph up there. It was really neat to see him mm-hmm. in that moment 
um, with his animal. That's awesome. He's also yeah. a really deep thinker. He's very mm-hmm. interesting. So I'm sure yeah. that was a really cool. Yeah, it was good. He, yeah. yeah, it's just such a blast to hunt with and so great in the backcountry. And, um, you know, so just, you know, all the four of us just had just a blast together. You know, it's, it's a true, it was a true team effort mm-hmm. to, to make it all work, yeah. you know. So, yeah. So then, you know, Brenda, walk us off the mountain. Well, we had to kind of retrace our steps back, um, and uh, it was slow but steady, and uh, we kind of separated a few times. You know, some of us were more comfortable doing harder ways, um, but it was fine. (laughs) Uh, We all met back down um, with, you know, two chamois on our backs and got to the river and before dark, just completely stoked. Um, It was interesting because we were, you know, Typically, when you set out in the morning, you're like, hey, it's going to do this, and it's going to do this, and let's do this. We actually did, like, everything we said we were going to do in the morning, Mm -hmm. um, which is very unlikely when you're hunting. Usually, (laughs) something distracts you, and you go a totally different direction. You'll love it when a plan comes (laughs) together. Yeah. 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 We said, let's go double on those and get back before dark. So we did. (laughs) Yeah. And then we cooked up up chamois that night didn't we oh yeah yeah because we had, we had your back we had a little yeah. bit of oh. the night before we just got our tent and we cooked up the back strap yeah it was great mm. oh my god that was so good it was in the really sky good. it actually stopped raining for yes. a couple hours there and we got some uh photos of the night sky yeah, yeah. and the milky way and the southern cross and all yeah. those constellations that kobe yeah. likes to photo yeah um with the tent the light on it the tent. it was just kind of an epic night really celebrating what we came to do and then like just got our bellies full of uh of eating backstrap and stuff and we br- brought some seasoning a little bit of oil right yep. to up there and stuff and just cooked it in the jet boil um that night and um so yeah it was a super super fun night and um it rained then it's so hard. raining that yeah so hard all night not as hard as the next night though wait oh yeah because then we had so the next day because we were like, okay, we You're get to, night, yeah. mm. we get to, uh, but wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> Go, I was up on the gun again, and uh, I needed some photos still of, of a little bit of this, a little bit of that of the rifle. So we were going to go the next morning and pop up where we missed old one horn and kind of towards where the other two were, uh, where Brenda shot hers. And uh, it was a beautiful morning. The clouds are broke. It was when we got to see the Alps, actually, yeah, the interior of the Alps got that sweet sunrise. That's that sweet oh, sunrise yeah. picture of in I the know, Alps there. Yeah. Um, and so just kind of took our time and, and got going. And, oh, man, everything was just fogged up. The binos, the cameras. Remember yeah. when we got up that, that first hill? and All of a sudden. Glass. The visibility fog. came down, and then it was 24 hours. It just it never yeah. released. It, it was great. We were optimistic. And then <laughs> it started to cloud up a little bit, and we're just I'm, we're going up this rise, and I'm just taking a step or two and glassing, peeking, and take like two steps, and I just see a chamois staring at me at like 150 yards. I'm like, oh no! So it like looks at me, and then it disappears down in the ravine. So I'm like, thinking, okay, I should move up so I can, because the grass would have been too. Sh- I couldn't get a shot off if I sat down. Didn't have anything to lean on. And so it dipped down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to move up a little bit. As soon as I started moving up, I saw his buddy that was staring right at me. Oh, no. And then within 10 seconds, the whole cloud cover dropped to 50-yard visibility. So I couldn't even see if they were escaping up the hillside. Just shut the opportunity down. Never saw Shamie again. We stood in the clouds for about three or four hours just getting (laughs) drenched. And we're like, should we just go back to the tents? Yeah. So we were potentially going to get a helicopter ride out at 3.30 yeah. that day. So we went back to the tents, and it just dumped and dumped and dumped. We were back at noon, yeah, by noon, before noon probably. And we're just like, well, at this point. So we get in the tents, and we wait it out. We're all in our separate tents, kind of, you know, shouting distance from each other. On the helicopter landing pad. So <laughs> especially Brenda and I, we were on there. So I was in reaching the helicopter guys, and I'm like, yeah, just let us know like a little ahead of time. Because I'm like, well, last thing I'm going to do is just pick up camp and, sit and just rain. sit in the rain and get all of camp wet. 
Yeah. You, you know, picking up camp in the and, rain. And you never know. Like, they could just cancel, right, if they can't get in there. So it's like, right. you don't want to so pick that's up. kind oh, of yeah. what happened. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I get the, yeah, just give us like an hour out. Give us whatever. And all of a sudden, pilot's on his way. Be ready says, now. Be no, ready be ready now. now. And we are in our sleeping bags. In <laughs> our puffy pants, just <laughs> curled up with some hot chocolate. And then I just yelled to the guys, we got to be ready now. And we're like, we're on the helicopter pad. We're on the helicopter pad. There's no visibility. It's just going to boop, just pop on us, and we're going to die. <laughs> so we just start tearing up camp, like kind of just going, cool, we're leaving. So who cares what doesn't get wet or gets wet? So we pick up camp, get everything wet, throw everything in a pile, and just sit in the rain and wait and wait and wait till finally I get an inreach. Like we're just waiting in the rain, just drenched. Helicopter made it up there, but couldn't get to you. See you in the morning. This was like at <laughs> four. I bet yeah. your heart just sank. Brenda called it from like the second we picked up. I mean, we all had a feeling, but Brenda was like, nope, it's not going to get here, guys. So Adam got all grumpy. He was like, Rah! and then I was like, Rah! I just started kind of yelling because there wasn't any. I mean, you might as well just be silly about it. <laughs> so then we put all back up camp together. And at 5 o'clock, with hours of daylight left, we just sat in our wet tents all night long, and Joseph came over and had a meal with us. And oh, He was so my, wet. Oh, you, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And then you could hear, like, our jet boil fire up, and then every time ours did, it's kind of like, you know, then Kobe would just get hungry, and you'd hear his jet boil fire up in the tent. And My so. entertainment was filling my jet boil with water dripping off my tent. I filled up a whole two cups of water for my dinner. <laughs> and uh, my, my dinner the night before was two cups, and so I assumed two cups. And then after I poured the two cups of boiling water in, I look, and it says uh, one and one-third cups. So. so you had soup. I had soup. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then we, we started worrying about 8, 8.30 the next morning because we were like, I wonder. I mean, it's pouring, so we're like, mm -hmm. is it going to be pouring tomorrow morning? So hard. That was the so, hardest rain we experienced. So it was hard. insane. All night long. Yeah. yeah. And we knew we had to get we had to go get out of there in the helicopter and drive like six or seven hours um, back to get our flight. So we're like, we kinda have to get out tomorrow or it's gonna be a long rebooking of sorts. Yeah. So we get up in the morning Pressure. and get all packed up. And the helicopter was there maybe a half hour after they said or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then so he, and he told, are you going to say he, where he got to the oh, night before? Yeah, yeah. The night before he said he was, he got like 200 yards from us or something. Like oh. right down the river. Right down the he river. He just couldn't get in. Um, oh. And then what's really funny is so it's like we're supposed to get picked up at 8. And then it wasn't until about 8.40 or something. It might have been so, almost 9. Yeah. yeah so, so we're like, yeah, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. And all of a sudden – we start planning, like we're like, we're get these maps out and we're like, okay, so if we have to get to so-and-so, so-and-so, so like, how, would get, how would we get, <laughs> let's leave our stuff here, well, it doesn't matter. And then as soon, that look took the time of the, like, you know, just the creative juices and like took our mind off of it. And then of course the helicopter comes by and we're <laughs> yeah. like, well, at least we could have gotten out. Yeah. Um, the half typical. hour before that, the clouds kind of started I coming know. in on us. So we're all like, uh-oh. <laughs> Because that's the problem is the day before it had been nice for just a little bit, and then we lost it for 20-something hours. So we were afraid that was going to happen. And yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have hiked out, but but we were looking at the map. <laughs> but you could imagine. So yeah. I had taken a picture of a topo map on the wall, and I think we were looking at that. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what we were looking at. Yeah, that was on the wall at the helicopter charter <laughs> place. Yeah. So It wasn't very far, but for how long it took us to cover miles, it would have been a long a long trip a out. A very long trip, yeah. You had to go opposite way for a long time. You couldn't go up and over. So you had to go back down a valley to another valley and, you know, all these things to, to get to a town that we didn't even know where it was. <laughs> With, <laughs> without getting clipped out. Yeah, yes. it would have been impossible. But it was fun to talk about. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we got back there, had a good breakfast, and then drove all the way across the country um, back to Christ Church, hung our stuff in the... A hotel room because our bags were going to be like 50 pounds over because of so much water weight. So we got to this hotel airport in Christchurch and had a super early flight the next morning and then just had tents and mm. everything hanging out and had a super good meal and got up the next day and flew home. 
Yeah. yeah. That was, was the trip with we, all the animals that we came to get. How many SD cards of... I had 876 gigabytes of video and photos. I figure about 170 of that's photos. So about 700 gigs of video to edit a film out of. Sounds like a lot. Sounds that, like a, that is a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So we, yeah, came home with great memories, great trophies, ate some great meat, met some great people, got some great footage, tested our products, uh, which there was zero problems with. And so, like, it just was a successful trip. Long ways there, had the flight problems, everything. The way home was pretty smooth. And we uh, we made it all the way home. We didn't lose our camera guy um, <laughs> on the tar hunt. So, like, for what it it was one of those, like, how did it all come together like that? Mm-hmm. But you got to love it when a plan comes together, and that's what happened on the New Zealand trip. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful place. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. place. I'll kind of end us with this. Land this helicopter, if mm-hmm. you must. Um, <laughs> Adam mentioned some testing of products. We we take a lot of pride in testing the products. So one week from when this podcast, I'll give you a little podcast, guys, a little little tip or a little nugget here. A product that you guys were testing will be launching mm-hmm. one week after this podcast. So May 29th, be on the be on the lookout. Okay, we got a lot of cool imagery. There'll be some cool stuff coming out. So, and with that, just also be thinking the the week after that we're gonna we're playing with some ideas of an interactive podcast where we do a Q and A with Adam. So, if you guys have any questions you want to ask about Weatherby in general, start sending those questions to on our mark at weatherby.com email us so we want to kind of kick that off that's going to be here in a couple of weeks so appreciate you guys telling the story i'm looking forward to next week to uh unveil these one of these rifles that you guys were testing so thanks